to draw us into this wonderful gospel. Some, some weeks ago, I uh, had a Samuel experience at one of my parishes uh, that we were celebrating the children's mass, and there was a couple hundred kids there, and we were all vested like we are now, and uh, I had the microphone neatly in my pocket and the microphone here, and we're beginning to process in and get about halfway, and all of a sudden there's boom! Yes, Lord? <laughs> and so we process in, and I'm thinking, oh boy, this is going to be a fun mass because of all the stuff that can happen with the microphone. But nothing happened. The readings went off fine, the kids did great. We get to the gospel, it was wonderful. We get to the homily, and about halfway through the homily, boom! Yes, Lord. <laughs> Your servant is listening, Lord. Speak, speak. And continued the homily, uh, and after that, uh, got into the Eucharistic celebration and got to the consecration. And right after saying the words of consecration for the body of Christ, there was boom, boom. Of course, I didn't react that way. Inside, I'm doing this, okay? Because I can't, you know, I can't. I'm going, wow, wow. He's with us. Wow. He touches us. Wow. What a moment. And it's that kind of invitation that we accept as we enter into this universe now. And then we hear St. Paul telling us that we belong to Christ. And our very bodies belong to Christ. And all of that is really meant to draw us into this wonderful gospel. And St. Ignatius of Loyola would have us enter into it as the people of God and let that gospel speak to us personally. And so as we stand next to St. John the Baptist and we hear him say, Behold the Lamb of God, a lot of stuff happens in that moment because all of a sudden we're transported back with the Hebrews who were awaiting the angel of death to pass over their house. And the lentils have the blood of the Lamb. And they cook the Lamb and they're standing around the Lamb on pilgrimage ready to eat the lamb, and that is what's going to carry them through the journey. And John says, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the disciples understand. And so the invitation of the call is for us to enter into the moment and to follow Jesus. That's really what you've been doing all these days. And it's been, hopefully, a moment of hope for you. And call to hope and a call to trust. And as you follow Jesus, he turns and he says to you and to me, what are you looking for? Now let's bring that hope into our lives. Some time ago uh, in February, uh, well first, in December of, of a year ago, uh, I got a call from an archbishop representing the Holy Father and said, the Holy Father wants you to be the fourth bishop of Biloxi, Mississippi, the Diocese of Biloxi. Will you accept? Say what? <laughs> so after conversation, I eventually accepted. And what happened, though, is that as we were packing and getting ready to go, I had a stomach ache, and it got seemed to get worse, but I was going to travel anyway to Biloxi. I stopped to see my doctor, and my doctor says, you ain't going nowhere. That's my best Texas exit, by the way. You know. <laughs> and you're going in the hospital, and I ended up with a perforated colon and a perforated small intestine. So that was a month, laying with your arms out with the, the IVs in the arms. And this gospel, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And each of you have one of these kind of stories in your own life. You may have lost a loved one. 
You may have a family member that may, may be ill. There may be something going on in your relationships with your family, your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren. And Jesus turns to each of us and he says, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And the answer that the disciples give is, Teacher, where are you staying? Where are you staying? And that's really a wow question too. It's not so much where are you staying, but where do you live? Where do you live? And can I live with you? Can I live with you? Can I be with you? Can I stay with you? And he says to them and to us, come and you will see. And I discovered in that hospital bed that that's where I needed to go because I could not do anything else. I needed to be with him. And I needed to literally just lay in his arms like a limp noodle because that's all I had. Lay in his arms. And he offers that grace to each of us in a special way. What are you looking for? Teacher, where are you staying? Hopefully, for us, he's staying here in us. And he says to us, I love you so much that I'm going to give you myself here at the altar. And that love is your call. That love is your call by name. And so that's what happened to me. On April 28th of this past year, I got called by name to be the Bishop of the Diocese of Biloxi. Prayers. Lots of prayers needed. Keep the prayers coming. The Lord calls each and every one of you too, by name, as he did in this gospel. He called Peter in this gospel, our first pope. And he called him into his love. And he called him into his love in such a way that Peter followed him wherever he went. Wherever he went. And that's the invitation for each of us. To hear the call. Christ in our lives and to hope in that call to trust in that call and to let that call truly guide us and lead us and shape us and help us no matter what's going on in our lives and to let his love truly truly embrace our lives because there's only one hope in the end and it's him and we celebrate therefore this Eucharist of hope, this Eucharist of love, and this Eucharist of faith. Pray for God's loving grace that as you've entered into this Word of God, that you can also take it now into the Eucharist and share in His body and His blood that you may be one with Him, that I may be one with Him together with you.